great to be here. Uh, I grew up in a lower middle class household in India. And growing up, uh, the life design was very simple. Uh, design was to make a lot of money. And when you retire, when I retired, the idea was, can I actually spend the rest of my working life serving? Uh, as the career grew, and as India grew over the last few decades, uh, India did better than India thought. And I also ended up doing better than I thought. And uh, over this journey, what I realized was that uh, this desire to retire and serve started slipping into my work life from 60s to 50s to 40s. So I entered my 30s thinking sometime in my 40s I'll take a break, and I spend the second innings of my work life in service. Uh, I started my 30s feeling a little bit uh, uh, cheating myself that I'd never done any volunteering or donating of any kind. So I started spending time in communities near Delhi, uh, supporting some nonprofits on the ground as a volunteer and donor. Uh, and that changed everything for me. That gave me uh, sort of the realization that the narrative uh, that I bought that I need to make money in my work life was something that was not mine. The more authentic part of me actually wanted to serve. So early 30s, I was doing that. Uh, my day job used to be heading mobile business for Google, for Japan and Asia. Uh, I did that for a while, moved to Bangalore after that, uh, joined a startup, and a few of us ended up building like the first tech unicorn in India. Uh, but this journey of 30 started biting me that I was not doing anything that I started in Delhi when I moved to Bangalore. So uh, late 30s, uh, around 38, I thought it's a good timing for me to make the switch. This notion of retiring in 40s slipped into 30s. And at 38, I decided to call it quits in the corporate life. And I started this organization called The Nudge. The design of Nudge was very simple. The idea was we wanted to serve the poor. And uh, it's been amazing four years. We have already impacted the lives of more than a million people through our direct and indirect work. What we do at The Nudge is very simple. We build sustainable livelihoods for the underprivileged, both through jobs in urban areas, as well as through rural livelihoods uh, in uh, communities in uh, rural parts of the country. The first thing that we do is we bring a lot of uh, uh, underprivileged young adults into our fully residential centers that we call gurukuls. Uh, these young adults come and live with us for 90 days. We try to do a lot of foundation repair given the communities that they actually come from. And over these 90 days, we give them life skills, learning skills, but most importantly, one job skill that can get them started in life. So far over the last four years, we have graduated about 4,000 plus people. Our annual run rate is about 3,500, 4,000 now into jobs such as Starbucks, PVR, Cinepolis, and variety of other organizations. Uh, we have never graduated a student without a job. So we have 100% placements better than most colleges that you would see at any part of the world. Uh, we have changed the aspiration for our work through skilling. This year, we are going away from just doing the grassroots bottoms of work, and we are changing it to a top-down design calling it the Center of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. And the idea is how do we support the million plus youth that India is adding into the labor market every single month. If you extrapolate in the next 15 years, India alone will add roughly half the population of US as fresh supply of people into the job market. And half of them come from poor backgrounds, college dropouts, or even otherwise not employable. So we're trying to figure out a way to accelerate the impact and scale of Skill India that the government is working on through this initiative. The second thing that we realize is that skilling does not touch the people who are in extreme poverty. And India is home to the second largest number of extreme poor in any country in the world. We have 65 million people in India who do not have food security of two meals a day. So what we are doing with this initiative is we are working with people like Chaya Maji who are actually forced to have distress migration uh, every single year because they have no economic assets, no land, nothing else. Uh, they're not able to get the food on the table for every single day of the year. And we are trying to introduce a program where over a two to three year period, we give them food security and a couple of economic assets through which they can come out of extreme poverty. Our goal is to take 100,000 families, which is about half a million people, out of extreme poverty over the next 10 years through this program. So this is the work that we do directly on the ground in India. While doing this, what we realized uh, uh, very, very personally as an organization is that it was very, very difficult to find talent for the organization itself. 
all of the best engineers, doctors, lawyers, artists, journalists, you name it, everybody is coming out of colleges everywhere in the world, not just in India, trying to solve for the world's most lucrative problems, not the world's most important problems. And we know what is getting solved. We'll have salad delivery from drones on 17th story in a tall building before we'll have medicine to a dying mother in a community. So how do you get talent to start feeling inspired and solving the important problems, not just lucrative problems? And that's why we started Encore. Uh, Encore is an initiative where we are trying to nudge and nurture the top talent in India and beyond to come and solve for the most important problems that we are facing. Uh, we have a launch pad for nonprofit entrepreneurs. We have an incubator and an accelerator. We started this about a couple of years back, and today we have already graduated 50 nonprofits out of our program, many of them who have gone on to raise more than 15 times money that what we gave them along with the incubation program that we run. So it's been a great success. Uh, Forbes 30 under 30, two of the MIT Sol finalists of this year, Goldman Sachs nonprofit startup of the year, Fast Company, World Changing Ideas, one of those, all of them have come from the cohorts that we have run in the last one and a half years here. So it's been an amazing run. Uh, this is broadly the scope of the work that we do. Uh, amazing journey of support getting, coming all the way from Rockefellers to Ford to Omidyar, uh, Tata Trust, and Lake Nees, and all the other organizations in India who are supporting the work we do through CSR efforts as well. And, uh, uh, but the journey is just getting started. Uh, it's really great to be here. I, I really appreciate the Chalo Gave initiative that Indiaspora just announced a uh, day before yesterday. We are a small, uh, one of those organizations that can actually go on that initiative and support as well. So really looking forward to you. India cannot come out of where it is unless the diaspora starts to look back and support it in an even bigger fashion than we are doing today. Thank you.